Good morning. Good morning. I'm Pastor Yasmel Ray. It's truly a blessing for me to uh, have to share the Word of God with you today. It's a privilege to be in this place today. Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 to 13. Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 to 13. Hear the Word of God. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have not need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what that means. I desire mercy, no sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for this morning and the opportunity to worship you, to praise your name. And now listen your voice. Speak to us because we need you. We open our hearts to you in this morning. In your precious name, amen and amen. I really believe it's nothing like the feeling of being doing what we really love. We really think it's nothing like that. Probably all of us in one moment in our life work in something we don't like, right? Probably we try to do a lot of things don't really fit with us. But when we fulfill our purpose in life, when we are doing what we really love, when we are following what God desires for us, that really fills our hearts. This really means to be happy and doing what God desires for us. You know, before serving God in any capacity, don't need to necessarily be ministry, just whatever God's calling us to do, serving children, youth, those people in need, multicultural ministry, whatever is, whatever God is calling us every single day, everything starts with one small step. Everything has a beginning for our life today. For Matthew is one of those interesting disciples in the Bible because the Bible describes what he was doing before Jesus called him. And was those kind of job people really hate. It's those kind of uh, jobs was not well accepted between the people because he represented the Roman Empire. Because they were treated as a traitor. They were not welcome between their own people, between their own families. But Matthew was on that place like every morning, knowing how difficult it will be. Knowing the people will come to him, probably no smiling. Just the opposite. Very mad. But he's just working every day. But that day was different because Jesus had another plan for him. Jesus came. Jesus stopped. And Jesus spoke to him for the first time. With only one simple phrase, follow me. Just that simple. Just follow me. You know, sometimes on 2023, uh, we need to explain a lot of things to people. We need to preach thousand sermons. We need to try to do our best to convince people to follow Jesus. But this story was only one small phrase. Just follow me. Bible say he don't think twice and he followed. He followed Jesus. And he continued that until his house. 
And yes, it's uh, like it always happens, it's a lot of people will be mad no matter what. It's people will be complaining no matter what. If you are a tax collector, they will complain. If you are sitting now trying to change, they will complain. If you are given a chance to a sinner, they will complain. No matter what, some people will complain all the time. But Jesus is still thinking an opportunity to that family. Opportunity to tax collectors. Opportunity to the people called sinners. And Jesus said, this is my plan for those who really follow me. For those people really want to follow me. And what Jesus is trying to do here is actually what he explained in John chapter 14, verse 6. When Jesus say, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And no one's come to the Father except through me. What Jesus is trying to do here with Matthew is showing him what is the way. Showing him, I am the way. I am the hope for those people who don't have any other hope. I am the way. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is still calling people today. Jesus is still calling us today. But one important part of Matthew's story is the part when he really moved. Because Jesus can call many times, but sometimes we don't respond. Sometimes we don't get up and move. But with Matthew, the difference was he really understood who is calling. So he moved. Today, Jesus is still are calling people, but we need to say yes. We need to really accept the challenge. There's so many people in need around us. And this is one of the many things I love of this church. So many people are being impacted by you, not only in our community, around our community, and through the world. You are making the difference in Guatemala and Serbia and many other countries. But you know, it's still a lot of need around us. And God is calling people to say yes even today. To say yes to that calling. Because the Bible is full of examples of great miracles. But after the people accept that calling from God. David had to fight Goliath to save his people. Moses has to raise the rod to open the sea. The people of Israel has to go around Jericho seven times before the wall falls. The woman has to touch Jesus to receive healing. Jesus has to die to give us salvation. One thing is the information and another totally different thing is the action. So Jesus is still calling people to act, to do to move and those who really believe in that and raise and work and do god bless that god bless your hands god bless what you are doing but brothers and sisters sometimes we are so focused in our own problems we are so focused in our own dreams in my plans in how we are going to do in my daily job how we're going to plan my life in the next 20 years. And sometimes that is good. Don't understand different. That is good to plan and make plans. But sometimes we are so focused in our own plans to we forget God's plan for us. So my question for you this morning is what God is putting in your hands to do today. What God is calling you today to do. In your community, what you're doing with the people close to you, in your church, in this place, what God is calling you to do today. Because sometimes what we need is just one step. What we need sometimes is just one moment. Like a dad, Matthew, sitting at the tax booth. Just that moment. 
when he listened the right person calling, when he listened Jesus calling him. So what is the plan today? What is your purpose on life? What really fills your heart? What really moves God's heart? What really is what is going to happen with our church in the next hundred years? It's beautiful because in a couple of weeks we are going to celebrate and remember uh, just laid in the first stone on the construction of this sanctuary, the hundredth anniversary of laying that cornerstone. And, and we will remember that in a couple of weeks. But in a couple more years, we are going to celebrate uh, the hundredth anniversary of this sanctuary being finished. In a couple more years, the 200th anniversary of the church. That is legacy, brothers and sisters. You and me, today we are receiving what generations before us plant in this church and work in this church and pray in this church. So what we are going to do today for the next generation? What we are going to do, probably what we just need is to accept that special moment, that special calling, that Jesus coming today with you and me, because I don't know if you believe it or not, but Jesus is right here with you right now because he promised that he promised to be with us every single day so i believe he's here in this place calling you to do to serve even more than we already are doing but sometimes we need to find that opportunity and take it to find that invitation and accept it one of the examples in the Bible I really like, because it's, the Bible don't explain too much about this person. It's only one verse, just one verse in, around a lot of amazing other ones. But 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 20, explains just one amazing thing from one person. 2 Samuel 23, 20. Bible say Benaiah son of Oida was a valiant warrior of Capsil, a doer of great great deeds. He struck down two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and killed a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. Just one verse, okay? About one guy. To have the amazing idea to fight a lion. I don't know what you think about this, but for me, this is very crazy. Are you ever being close to a lion, a full-grown lion? Well, the most close I've been is just in a zoo. And believe me, I don't want to be too close, right? But this guy have the amazing idea to follow a lion but to do a more complicated, he just did in a very difficult day when snow had fallen. And he just pursued that lion, and the lion ran. That is not normally the story, okay? Normally, when the lion is in front of us, the story is different. We run. It's the only thing you are going to think in that moment. You will forget everything else. The only things in your mind will be run. But this guy, he didn't. For him, was his shot, his opportunity to do something different. Because he has a dream. He has just plans. He wants to be close of King David. And when your king kills lions and giants and birds, if you really want to be close to him, you need to do the same. So when you put in your resume, I kill lions, that is very impressive, right? Well, honestly, that is his 
opportunity to do it. He wanted to impress the king. So he accepted that challenge and he pursued the lion. And the Bible described the lion was hiding in a pit and he pursued it there and he killed it. So one day changed the future. So one day changed everything else. But the challenge was big. A fully grown lion can run up to 36 miles per hour. And also, also can jump up to 29 feet in one bound. There's no way he can win that battle. It's not a change to something good can happen for him in this kind. And every single day, we are facing the same problem. We are facing impossible situations. When our first thinking is, I cannot do it. I'm not capable to do that. Every single day, we have people around us. And when we see it and we know what they are dealing with and their story, our first thought is, I cannot help that person. It's nothing I can do. We are very aware of all the issues we have in our communities. We know, but we still put it in every sign, Madisonville is the best town on the earth. Why? Because we are aware of the problems we have, but still we have the dream, the goal to actually be the best town. But you know, situations and possibles can happen every single day. But the difference between the people really trusting God and believe the promise of God is to they know who is calling. They know it's not about us. I don't have the power or the ability to do nothing in this place. It's about Him. Sometimes we are so busy climbing the ladder of success that we don't realize he's leaning on the wrong wall. Sometimes we are so busy building a life. Sometimes we are so busy putting our trust in something. It's not God. It's the wrong place. But I really believe the people like Benaiah, they will see that opportunity and use it. Because after that day, he become to be one of the warrior close to the king. And not only that, he was actually the chief of his personal guard. He was his personal bodyguard of the King David. Why? Because he decided to defy what means impossible. He decided to go against what his mind was ruling. He decided to believe the same God in his, was with his king is also with him. He decided to be close to his king. Wilson Bentley, known throughout the war as the no flag man, born in Jericho, state of Vermont. But since he was little, he was, became very interested in the snow. Why? Because he born in a farm with most part of the year was only snow around his house. So for him, for him was no other things to do for months. He could not go to the school. And he was very, very interested in, in microphotography. And for years, he tried every time to observe and take pictures of the crystals of the snow, trying to see them. As you have on the screen, that's one of the examples he took with his camera. But after 
20 years trying. And what he discovered is every single crystal is different and unique. What he discovered following his passion for 20 years was changing the history. Because in 1931, he published his book, Snow Crystals, with 2,400 image. But you know, pursuing that, everything start and begin in a very small moment when his mom was reading the Bible and only one verse stuck in his heart. Job chapter 38, verse 22. He read for first time. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow? Or have you seen the storehouses of the hell? Just that single verse just light something on him and say, what is different if not? What is special in something is around me? For that day was his passion, and he pursued that for 20 years. No success in the beginning, but he kept trying because only one verse was his inspiration. I really believe sometimes our life become to be special and important from one verse. And probably all of you have your favorite Bible verse. And sometimes that verse has become to be the script of our life. For me, in my life, my favorite verse is Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you task, put yourself into it. As done for the Lord and not for your masters. So whatever I try to do, I do it with the best I can, with my best abilities, with the best excellence I can, because it's for God. So in that moment, I don't try to people see it. I don't try to people are impressed. I only do the best I can do because everything we do is for him. So today, what is your verse? What is that promise God is giving you today? What is that moment you need to accept and adapt? What is the life you need to start living today based on God's calling in your life? Because for King David, that beginning of his purpose was when a prophet was just standing in his doorstep, calling for the next king. And for Benaiah, was chasing a lion. But that door opened another, be close to the king and be one of the warriors of the king. But that door opened another door to the future because after King David, Benaiah was the chief commander of the army of Israel with King Solomon. One verse on the Bible with a crazy guy chasing a legend changed the history forever to make him the chief commander of the army. Why? Because he proved nothing is impossible to those who are accepting the calling. For those who are one to follow Jesus on the path. Brothers and sisters, today, when we finish our life, and one day we are before Jesus, he will never tell you well say, or well thought, or well planned. What is he going to tell you is only one measure. You did well, good and faithful servant. So it's good to plan, it's good to think. But it's time to move. It's time to accept that. And let me tell you, many of the situations will be impossible for you. And that is great. Because when you are trying to do something, it's impossible, it looks so difficult, 
and you don't have the resources to do it is when God then opens doors to you see how possible it is and he receive the glory, not me. But he is an expert. God is expert in making impossible situations. That is why he took 9,700 for the Gideon's army and only left him with 300. Impossible. Impossible for everybody. This is why he just showed up after Lazarus was dead for four days. Impossible. But when he called, just follow me. Everything will change. The same impossible pos uh, possibility I had four years ago to be pastor of Madisonville. I don't have a preaching license at that moment. I never preached an English service of my life before. And I just received a calling for a person I never met before about this place. And in my mind, there's no chance to this is a possibility. Because in my mind, it was not possible to uh, one of the most important congregation in Kentucky Annual Conference can accept as their pastor a Cuban guy don't speak too well the English, don't have preaching license yet, don't have too much experience. And the most important for me is something I've been facing my whole life. I've been serving God since I was seven years old. And I planned the first church with 15 years old. So I've been preaching my whole life and been missionary. And I start being a missionary with 13 years old. And I always have one issue. The people always say to our two John to do this. So coming to this place was, well, I'm too young to be in Madisonville. It was a great surprise for me to see our senior pastors are very young too, so that was good. <laughs> but not change, at least on my mind. But God was calling, and here I am four years later. God was calling. God was calling to be part of a group of people to very quick become to be my family and always will be. Why? Because you accept the calling. Because you accept to make a difference on people from other countries, to invest in young people, to invest in just people different like you. Probably you watch the amazing performance of our orchestra and choir on the annual conference and several pastors came after that performance to me and asked me how is possible a couple like John Park and Sore Park are they are they are living in Madisonville <laughs> they were well good question but let me tell you because this church accept the challenge of invest in people different. Just Korean and Cubans, Mexicans and Guatemala and people from different countries and different backgrounds. But you, Madisonville, accept the calling to do what God is calling you. So today we have an invitation, an invitation to continue doing that, continue investing. Continue working. And today I preach my last sermon as pastor in this place. But you always will be in my heart because of that. Because I will never forget how you received me and my family in this place. How you really loved me during all these years. And I was more, more than proud of this place. Why? Because serving with people like you. Nothing can change that. 
But my invitation is to you for Esperanza Viva and for every other single ministry we have in our church, for outreach, discipleship, and everything else we have in our church, please keep investing, keep working, keep accepting that promise God is giving to you. Because it's not about me, it's not about a person, it's about the Jesus calling you to continue his work in this place. So thank you for you, what you are doing today. And keep taking that promise. Sometimes people will not be happy about it, but keep that. Just remember who is calling you to make the difference. Remember who is giving you that. Um, sometimes he will present before you impossible situations like uh, happened on 2020 with COVID. But we face it together, we fought it together, and here we are, more stronger than before. So please, keep making the difference in this place. Keep turning this place as a lighthouse, as a whole place for every people are welcome here. Pray with me. God, thank you. Thank you for this place. Thank you for my brothers and sisters in this place. God, we accept the calling today. We accept that promise to be part of what you're doing here for our next generation. So God, here we are. We accept the invitation, knowing you are sending us, but not alone, you are with us. In your powerful name we pray. Amen.